Yes, it's here. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Oh, ah, pretty I, good, I pretty good. Pretty nice day. Yes, it is. Uh, I made it myself just for you. And happy birthday, by the way. Thank you, Daddy. Come here, come here, come here. It's come my here. birthday today. Uh, yeah, okay. Kiss. Mm. Thank right, you, Daddy. Now. Okay. Take care now. <coughs> We're talking about communications. Excuse me. We're talking about communications. Communication is an interesting field. Uh, I think people have misnomers about it. Most of the successful communicators, I well, I shouldn't say it that way, but it's because I'm in radio. But um, radio is a good grounding for communications because you're just dealing with the microphone. Let me explain this to you real quick. It was a famous radio guy a long time ago, long time ago, way before most of you were born. His name is Arthur Guthrie. And, and, and he usually had an amateur hour or whatever, talent show or whatever. But his radio, claim to fame was radio. And he had the most, everybody listened to him. This back in the days of golden, so called golden age of radios, you know, the 40s, 50s, whatever it was. Well, they said, Well, Arthur, how come you're so successful? He said, Well, you know what I do? I just I take the microphone, here's one of those RCA, old RCA microphones, and I, and I put. And I put a smiley, I put a smiley face on it. Right? This is before smiley, this smiley faces. These I put the smiley face on it, and I talk to that, to that face. In other words, I talk to one person. I communicate with one person. Really interesting, don't you think? Because when I first, when I first got to South Africa, it was interesting, because uh, when people called into call shows, they would say, "Oh, uh, uh, good morning to you, and good morning to your listeners." You know, so even the listeners were thinking they were talking to like a stadium full of people. And you know, if you talk to a stadium, it's different. You know, like take the hip hoppers. Come on, you know the famous thing. What what happens to hip hop? You know, when you're in the studio, you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing. But when you get out of the stadium, you go, "What's happening in America?" You know, you know, you know, you know, you know how. Anyway, the point is, uh, it's a different dynamic in your head. So, so when you have when when you have that going, and then you have what we call right on your side, then you can just call other demeanor. It's called the I call it well. It's called the you get on your high horse. So you're, you're doing your thing. I bring this up because this is not a this is a critique. See, the thing about you know our, our, our two biggest spokespeople. Um, uh, Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore for well, I say spoke the source of what we do, but also remember Sandy Darity and, and Derek Hamilton are in this mix and some other people too. But if you listen, to, say for instance, to a Sandy Darity lecture, which you were a presentation, which you should, I like. How do all those people actually? I like Derek Hamilton the best, but I won't get into that right now. Anyway, the point is, if you listen to these people, they have a different demeanor when they talk. Usually it's a conversational thing. Usually it's a lecture, but it's a different thing than. And even if they get on red, they they. they they're different because they're not trained as, as actors or anything like that. So part of this thing, when you become a presenter, because that's what they call South Africa, I think that's the most accurate thing, you become a presenter, is like one step away from being an actor. You know, an actor, a presenter, like for instance, when they, when, when they uh, the film, film people have realized that when they want to get a, a newscaster on a, on, a, on a thing, they actually hire a newscaster rather than an actor playing a newscaster because it's a whole, newscaster do this thing, they get a certain, all the time, all the time, so you're trained like that, an actor is something, you know, okay, something different, okay. I bring all this up, sorry to be a little thing, because, see, uh, 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 um, Antonio Moore has a certain way of delivering, you know, and it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not comfortable, you know, let's put it that way, you know, and I'm not, not, it's not, a, let's just follow me, everybody just jump on me, come on, please, please, okay? Same thing with Yvette. Yvette has his way of just talking. It's it's a it's a, I don't say it's a grading thing, but it's a it's a thing where it, it, you have to be really interested in what she's saying rather than how she's delivering it. Okay, you, you understand? And now it really comes down to who's the uh, you know the messenger. Now you can't do anything about that. I mean, the only thing you can do about that is that I advise everybody who's going to do any kind of um, teaching, lawyering, or you know, uh, YouTubing or whatever you want to do. Take an acting class. You don't have to. You don't want to be an actor. I'm not a great actor at all. Believe me, I'm not a good actor at all. I'm, but I do a lot of other things, and which makes up for that stuff. Uh, but you should take an acting class just to understand what that is. You know what I mean? Or even you, maybe you may have a public speaking class. Something or do something in, in your high school or your college. Or you're taking, uh, joining a drama club. Something that you're expressing yourself beyond whatever. Because one of the things you learn, especially in acting, especially if you're going to do this kind of thing, uh, like I, when I was training people, I used to tell people, like, say, okay, you're 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 a, you're a news person, okay? Well, you know, if you was a, um, 
a saxophonist, you'd have to run your chords, you know, or your piano. You have to run your chords every day. Are you a news person? I mean, are you are you are you taking your stuff and reading it and reading it into the mirror like that? You know, are you? I mean, are you getting used to that rhythm, or whatever have you? Because that's your exercise. That's how you exercise your thing. Now, the other thing you have to do, especially as an actor, you find a lot of people talk from their nose. You know what I mean? I basically talk from my from my throat, but I, but but you know, I can't talk, you know, from from my chest. And and, uh, and if you really want to go deeper, I can talk from my belly, right? Now it takes some effort to do that and from belly all the time, so it's just more e easy for me to talk from you know from somewhere in this region. But a lot of people talk from this region, so you have to do your exercises so you bring this down to this region down, right around here, right? You don't have to go. You don't have to go too low because then you'd be faking it, be faking the funk, and that's not you know, or you'd be rapping. Okay. <clears throat> you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So it's just, so there's quality of voice and delivery, whatever have you. But the biggest thing. That if I'm beyond all that, I'm going to my nearly fuller junior now. <coughs> I actually, oh, the way you, this is a, this is you know the United Independent Compensatory Co-System co Concept. It's a, it's just a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which is white supremacy. So if you're not a victim of racism, white supremacy, this is not the book for you. But the way you read this book, it's a reference book. You just sort of. It's like, uh, for those of you Christians, it's like reading about, or, or reading Oli Quran, or, or reading about the Gita, or something like that. You can just, you know, read Confucius. You just, you can just go to any page and, and just start reading what it says there, and just use that for the day. Now, I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm on the sixth area of, of people relationship, which is um, politics. Since, it's, since uh, AUS is a political move, movement, you do realize you're in a political movement. This is sort of different than these other movements that are just, you know, blah, blah, and whatever have you, okay? We're supposed to have some political results. So I just talked to this, this thing right here, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to read these last two things here. Um, it's on page uh, 170 of the, of the, this is the 1984 edition. It's not the new one that they did in 2016, whatever it is. Uh, minimize anger and or hostility between yourself and those with whom you are engaging views. Got that? If a person seems to be angry or hostile towards your views that you express, do the following. Number one, ask the angered person this question. I'm like you're talking to all the naysayers for ADOs. Do you wish for me to be silent? and not express my views to you? That's number question one. Question number two. Well, well, two. If the answer is yes, then be silent and or do not express your views to that person. <laughs> if the answer is no, continue expressing your views, but strive to do so in such a manner as to increase understanding and to minimize conflict. This is important. If the answer is no, it's like, oh, no you, we, I want to know your views, right? Then you have to adjust. I know you, you say, oh, it's unfair, this other person. No, you have to adjust. And you continue expressing your views. But strive, try, please try, to do so in such a manner, in such a way, as to increase understanding and minimize conflict. So if somebody's cursing you, but you don't go and start cursing them out. And that's just going to escalate. They, they curse you out. You try to be calm. Then you try to bring them around to a certain way. Or if they're angry at you, oh, da, da, then you have to, you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Another point here. Then we're going to be through here. Do not accuse any victim of racism. Do not, okay. Do not accuse any victim of racism. Racism. He's talking about Neely Ford Jr. This is his book. Talking about not a non white In other words, a victim of racism is a non-white person. That's his definition. Do not accuse any victim of racism, non-white person, of selling out, selling out, that's in quotes, the rights, quotes, of non-white people to the racist white supremacists. I have to read this one again. Let's be, let's be you know, third on it. Do not accuse any, let's say, let's put it since it's us. Do not accuse any other victim of racism, that's a non-white person, of selling out um, the rights of non-white people to the racist white supremacists. Okay, so you can't accuse, well, you shouldn't. Okay, now he, he reasons the explanation, he gave reasons the explanation. Racist man and racist woman, we're talking about, he's talking about the white supremacists have functional power over all non-white people in the known universe. This is a controversial sex, uh, session with, with, with uh, 
uh, with Neely Fuller Jr. We'll get to that some other time. Therefore, no white person is responsible for selling out any person, animal, place, thing, idea um, uh, to anybody at any time. So he's saying that, well, you know, no white person is responsible for selling out. Now, you could interpret this any way you want. Here's the way I interpret it. A, a, a non-white person, a black person, who's selling out the race, it's not that they're selling out. They're being an instrument of the system. They think that by gaming the system to, 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 to being on the side of the Anglo racist white supremacist, right, or whoever, or the Indian racist white supremacist, or the, you know, or the, or the, or the black, or the African racist white supremacist. Because <laughs> it's, it's a system, right? So you, they, they, you can't really accuse them of selling out because they're just trying to get a leg up in a system. They're not, they're, okay, they're selling you out, but, and they are sort of selling out. But their ultimate purpose is for their own survival. You say, my, you, you, we might say, our survival depends on ADOS doing what they're supposed to do. Let us do this, and we will survive. We, there won't be no reason to sell out. And just as we're doing that, all these other movements are supposed to be doing what they're doing. They're not supposed to be jumping on ADOS or, as we say, attacking, you know, attempting to shut up or whatever they were to say. What they're supposed to be doing is doing what they are supposed to be doing, and therefore they won't be selling out. You got that? My glasses on that one. Try. You know? So, so, so you, there's a lot of, I mean, and let me give you a, a, a couple of examples, a couple of things. Uh, is that called now, especially with that thing? Remember, remember we, we, went, we went to this before, I like showing the thing. Does it here something? Oh, here it is. Remember, remember when Black Panther came out, I looked at it as a phenomenon. I'm like, wow, this is going to be, this is going to be really, really interesting. What's, what, what, you know, and it became a phenomenon. You know, a, what I call intergenerational generational phenomenon. Something that no movement has ever really done. You know what I'm saying? I, when you go to an event, any, any kind of event, you know, um, a Pan-African, whatever event, you don't have intergeneration, not, not, not in the kind of numbers that Black Panther brought out. The other thing she railed against is that, and I don't want your dash, this dashiki, whatever, you know, those things, you put your cultural things on. Hey, look, guess what? This is hat. Now, when I first, when I was in New York one time when I had, when, when I had this hat. Somebody said, oh, are you a welder? Meaning this hat is like a style of a well, you know, welder, the welding, I guess they make hats like this. And, and what, what's interesting to me is that, no, this hat is actually made from African material. So this is an African hat, okay? Now my wife's a designer. I should sort of wore one of my African times. My uh, 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 wife is a designer. She works with the material she gets. She's down in South Africa. She gets material from 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 Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, you know, South Africa, of course. You know, like, like the pants. Look, these are this is a shway shway. This kind of thing is called shway shway, right? So these pants, she made these pants too, right? She made this vest, you know. So these are all African things from an African woman, <laughs> from a black African woman who just had a birthday today. <laughs> and the point is. The point is, you, you don't. Have, why would you rail against? Uh, 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 saying, uh, and, and I don't understand why you would do that. It's unnecessary. Okay, there's some sort of frustration. It's unnecessary. So you don't have to do that. Um, uh, let me just try. I'm trying to end this real, real quick, but I'm not, not ending, of course, not being successful. And then plus, you have to understand some of the things you, people do is unnecessary. Like um, Umar Johnson came to uh, came to the Eastern Cape. Amazing. No, most people don't come to the Eastern Cape, and so um, the the people that invited him. Uh, anyway, I have a relationship with. Well, we hung out together, you know. Da, da, da. When we was down in East London, uh, uh, eating whatever happened. People always jump corns and talk about that. So I had a chance just to sit, to sit with him. Just for, for, I wait for everybody to do all their things. Everything calm down, and just one on one. Now, Dr. Umar Johnson, Johnson is a great listener. You have to understand that's a really good. Thing he will you he'll make contact and listen to you right. This is a whole thing for psychology and all the rest of the stuff. He's really really good. And I saw him do something here that was amazing to me with his field of psychology. But I said to him, I said, I said you know, Dr. Umar, look, you're great, man. I I, I like it. your your Tuesday sessions with really with with the mothers and you know with, with the school system thing. And but I find it and, and a lot of stuff that you do is admirable that you try to build a school whatever have you. But I say one of the things I think you 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 go after at the time he's going after preachers a lot. You know, big mega mega preachers. I say I think it's unnecessary. I mean, first of all, if, if you're doing something, then you you start you know going after other people of things, then they're just going to come back at you. This is unnecessary. I mean, I didn't say your minions could be doing that, but that's the way it really works. 
But the thing is, it's unnecessary. Why would you attack? It's, it's, you do, you're doing some, some things here. If you start attacking somebody here, it takes away from your, you're doing what you're doing over here. So there's no reason for you for you to attack anything. That's like, that's why I understand. No, I do understand. Everybody wants to fight. They, 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 that's the, the news media always sets up fights or whatever. Let's set up this. Let's set up that. Let's see what happens. You know. And, and quite frankly, that is that is that is classic. Classic Anglo racist white supremacy. Put them in a pit, watch them fight, and laugh about it. Ah, look at them. No, 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 no. I, I gave them this, and they gave them that, and they gave them that. Blah, 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 blah. And they're not in the pit. They're watching us. They're watching us. Or, you know, they, 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 they're watching this organization snipe against this organization, and they're, and they're getting away with whatever they're getting away with. So, it's nice. I. So the problem is that when you really feel right, you're what, what I call you're on your high horse, and they're looking down, you see something, whatever, and you start, you, on your high horse, you try to attack people, whatever happened, but you're on your high horse. Why are you on your high horse? You're supposed to be ground down, ground with the people. Get off the high horse. Forget that. Your points, your points stay on that point. When somebody attacks you, yes, you, you can attack back. I understand the form. I'm not saying not to attack. But the way you attack, the tone you use, it's all very, very, very important. It has to be done respectfully because when all is said and done, most of the things that, that, that uh, when you, let's call it in, in, in the street, on the street parlors, most of the time you have problems. Not really problems, but this and that. The problem is respect. The, the word, I, since I was a child, the word is respect. The cops perverted it because the cops just came in, you got to respect me. And most of us going to say, well, you show some respect. Why do I have to respect you? You're not showing any respect to us. That's where, you know, because the white people always mess things up. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so so that's it. I'm just trying to, you know, my my, my thing to, to Yvette, Antonio, and all of us is that, Show some respect when somebody attacks you. You don't have to attack them in a, in, a, in, a, in a vicious way. Other people will do that for you. You know what I mean? If you're a leader or the spokesman of something like that, I'm not saying be mamby pamby or, or even, I guess I'm saying be diplomatic. You don't have to be that diplomatic. But some of the vicious things that, 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 that people have come back with us, that's really, to me, is unnecessary. You know? So. Let's stop the unnecessary things. Stay on, as, as they say, stay on point. You know what I mean? One of the most amazing things about this, and I wish I, I wish Yvette would do this, maybe like Antonio, after his broadcast, after his transmissions, he always puts down you know, something about the wealth gap. I really wish he would monthly, something like play that Fred Hampton clip she used to play, which was he was saying that uh, somebody came to him and he said, well, do the revolution. And, yeah, I see your plan, the plan is cool, but A, you know, where's the educational component? It's a really amazing clip. I really wish that they would do that. But you should see the clip. Maybe I'll find a clip and put it into the show notes or whatever it is and uh, see what happens. Anyway, so that's just a, a message from me. T from the Pattersons taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from a desk of the ADOS. American descendants of chattel slavery. Important movement.